Hey guys, this is Kaizen here, and today I'm going to show you how you can double, triple, and in some cases quadruple your ore production here on the FTB Ultimate Reloaded Pack. Hello everybody, this is Kaizen here and welcome back to another episode here on our FTB Ultimate Reloaded series. Now today I want to get into a bit of thermal expansion because with that we can get a lot more yield from all of this stuff, all of our ores, which is awesome. Um, now at the moment we're using a macerator and we're getting this stuff, the pulverized, you know, iron and gold and whatever, and we get double. So, you know, one copper would give us two pulverized copper, right? And then you smelt that down to get the uh, the double production. However, with the macerator, you can get triple and sometimes quadruple for different ores. So that obviously is a huge plus. However, before we get into that, um, I'm having a storage problem. Um, our Steve's carts that we set up in the last episode, you can see there the tree farm is crazy. And this is the yield we're getting from it. Oh yeah, loads and loads of wood, as well as like loads of apples and loads of saplings and stuff. You can see it over here, it's working really well, almost a little bit too well. And has this guy run out of uh, fuel now maybe? Let's see, I can't seem to open it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it is out of fuel, but I'm actually going to leave it like that for a second because it's just going a little bit crazy. Um, so that's caused us a little bit of a storage problem. And if you're like me, then early on in mod packs, you do have a storage issue. So I'm going to show you guys today some ways that we can kind of counteract that. And there's two things that we're going to get into. The first one is what we call barrels. Um, so we have them here. Um, the This one here, the item barrel, holds 64 stacks of one item type. Um, so basically, you can see there, the recipe for that is not too bad at all. And obviously, at the moment, we have an absolute ton of wood. So we definitely do not have an issue with getting into this. Um, so I think I'll make up a good few of these, um, like this. And there we go. And I was thinking about the barrels, where do we want to put them? And I thought down by the dock might be a cool place to have a few of them. Um, and maybe just dot it around in different areas here as well. Uh, so if we were going to put them down here... How would we do this? I think we might want to kind of take these two pieces here and put them there like that. Uh, maybe get a bit more of this cobble going on. Would that work? I think that could work all right. Maybe like that, and we'll extend that grass path around in a minute. Um, now, do I have some path? I think I do in here maybe have the type of path that we're using. There it is. So we can put that down like that and have a couple barrels here. Now what we can do with that is get things like our wood that we have a lot of and just kind of dump it in these barrels, um, which is awesome. And also when you pick a barrel up, um, you can see that it just goes straight in like that. None of the wood will get lost when I pick it up. So that's another really useful thing about having a barrel to store things as opposed to a chest, um, which I'll show you guys in just a second. Uh, my inventory, as you can see, is really clogged up, so I just have nowhere to put this stuff at the moment. So that can kind of go down there like that. Now if I was to pick this up, there we go, break the barrel. Um, it will go up here in my inventory and it says that it's oak wood and there we go and there we go So that's all stored in there nicely. So maybe if we put three here like this um, and then maybe like hmm Maybe a couple like here Yeah, that could work just for things like cobble and wood that we have a lot of now in here I've kind of tidied this area up a little bit. Um, I want to maybe look at automating this, but I'm not sure how much we want to automate just yet because when we get into the thermal stuff, um, you know, some of this may not be necessary essentially. So I'm going to wait uh, for that. But there's a little tunnel down here, which we'll get into what that is in just a second. Um, but before we do that, there is also one other uh, storage thing I wanted to show you guys. And this one is particularly useful if, like me, you've got uh, in loads of chests here you know, a chest full of stuff, right? Like this one here is full and to have to move it all would be a bit time consuming or whatever. So what you can get, we type in here, chest upgrade, here we go. There's a variety of chest upgrades. Now what's interesting is, for example, you can go wood to copper, but you don't have to go wood to copper, then wood to iron. You can actually just do wood to iron. And if we click there, the recipe is not too bad. So I'd like to make up a few of those. Um, do we have planks on us? Uh, not at the moment, but there's a ton of them over here. This chest is obviously just here temporarily. It was just somewhere to put all my wood for a second while we were uh, getting into this. Um, now, what I think I'll do is I want to just make two of these to start off with because I'm not sure how this will work on a double chest. So if I look at this chest here... Ah, okay. So now it's kind of split everything up. So if I was to put that on there... Oh, they do stay as separate chests. Okay. But you see now each one has a double chest capability. That's pretty cool. 
Um, it's a little bit annoying that they don't go together just for the aesthetic, but at least we've got way more stuff to store now. This one here could probably do with an upgrade at some point, but uh, I think we're doing okay. But basically, if we want to do more upgrades, this could be a way to go, right? To get these iron upgrades. And you see here, you get all different ones, and eventually you get up to like diamonds and obsidian and all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, I'm guessing like crystal is probably the best, either crystal or obsidian, but maybe we'll explore that through the pack and see how we go. Um, but just a good way of expanding the storage you already have if you need to. So we've got a few more barrels that we can dot around, um, which would kind of make sense, I suppose. And you know, maybe we put one over here as well um, by this actual wood farm, maybe a couple here. There we go. So they are all now used. Now for thermal, um, Let's go down here first. You see here I've kind of tidied up the mine area to a certain point. Um, the reason for that is since this is going to be our main mining area and thermal is mainly going to be used for the ore processing that we get from mining, I created a little room here for us to do our thermal processing in. Um, now this is not going to be a thermal room as such, but just a thermal room for mining. That's really going to be the focus of what we're doing here. So I've got a bit of a space and this connects up to our base. So basically I was thinking that as we progress through this pack and we do more and more things, um, we can have little rooms going off of each of these, you know? Um, incidentally, the lighting there is just a torch behind a fence. Uh, I thought that looked okay, because it's, it's supposed to look a bit mine shafty, you know? Uh, but then we come up here and we're back in our house. So we can expand like the house in the future, we can expand down there in the future, and it'll all be connected up, which I thought would be quite nice. Uh, now, while we're in here, there's some things I need. So I want to get this lead. Um, actually, that might be all that I need. I think I might have already picked up uh, everything else. Yeah. A little bit of lead there still to smelt, but uh, we'll do that if we need it. So you may have noticed in my inventory, I do have a good few things to get us started with thermal expansion today. Um, one of the first things that I want to make is this thing, the Crescent Hammer, because that's going to be, uh, although it's thermal foundation, it syncs up with the thermal um, expansion pack. So we need a bit of tin and some iron. Now, do we have some tin? That would be annoying if we don't. Perhaps that was the thing I forgot. We have refined iron, which always looks like tin to me. All right, so I will get this tin smelting up. And we'll do something else first because we don't have to do the hammer first. Uh, it just kind of would have been useful, but never mind. And let's see, we got lots of fuel now because obviously I'm turning the wood that we're getting from our uh, Steve Scarts farm into charcoal, which means we're getting a whole load of fuel very easily, which is awesome. Um, okay, so forget the crescent hammer for a second. Uh, one thing we're going to want is a redstone furnace. Here we go. Um, so as you can see, quite a complicated recipe. Uh, so let's jump into this. So a machine frame, um, we need a tin gear, which I have some iron and some glass. So that shouldn't be a problem. Let's get to our bench here, uh, make one of those. Actually, yeah, we'll just make one for now, but I think we will need more. Um, copper gears we have, what are we missing right now? The bricks and this thing. Um, so let's make a good few of those. Maybe maybe I'll make eight of them for now. I don't want to use up all of our gold and iron, uh, redstone, I should say, on that. Uh, bricks, are they? Yes, I knew I had some lying around. If I can grab those. And I think we're good. So there's our redstone furnace. Okay, that is one tick done. Uh, the next thing we need is the pulverizer, which is the important thing for what we want to do, which is our ore processing stuff. If I click on the uses of this, um, you'll see here all the different like recipes and things that you can do in the pulverizer, which is very cool. Um, and if we go to this bit, we can see here different ores. And like there, for example, silver ore gives us three pulverized silver, but also a 10% chance of pulverized lead. So that's awesome. Uh, what else have we got in here? Like, uh, is that bauxite? 10% um, of aluminum and three of the bauxite dust. Coal gives us four with some pulverized coal at 25%. So, you know, you can see the yield is really good on this stuff. And that's obviously why it's important to get into this. Um, two flint, a piston and a machine frame. Let's start with the machine frame. Um, what are we missing? Oh, a tin gear. Well, let's get that tin that's been pulverized. We can start smelting some of that down. There we go. It's pretty quick, this process. So this is a good thing about it. Like if you do forget something like I did just there, uh, sorry, I'm just going here, uh, you can kind of amend that quite quickly. Um, what else is it we want? The copper gears we've got, that we've got, um, pistons and flint. Let's go and have a look at that. So pretty sure we have some pistons knocking about somewhere. Um, but I thought they were in here, so actually maybe we don't. Uh, but we can make those up without too much of a problem. Uh, do I have everything on me for a piston? Let's have a look. Yes, I do. And again, let's make up a few of these. Uh, let's make up, say, yeah, four for now. 
um, just because I'm trying to spread the resources to make sure I don't use too much on any one thing. Uh, flint, we have a couple of those in here, so that's not an issue. And we can now go get our tin that should be ready to go. Uh, should have had long enough to smelt enough for what we need. So, back into here, we need... Um, nope, not that. We need one of these, which needs one of these. Okay, no worries. Uh, machine frame. And finally, the pulverizer. There we go. Okay. That's another tick. Um, another thing I would like to make, and I'm getting a little bit busy here, aren't I? Um, let's go down and see what we can lose because this inventory is getting a little bit crazy early on. So we can get rid of the saplings. See here, a ton of saplings. If I do that, it's clearer. And apples as well. That's all from the Steve's Cart stuff. So yeah, pretty pretty awesome uh, start there. Uh, actually, I'll keep... Actually, that's fine. They can go in there. They can go in there. Um, alrighty. Let's clean things up a little bit. Um, so yeah, the induction smelter was another thing that I wanted to take a look at. See what the recipe is like for this. Um, okay, not too bad. Oh, invar. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do that just yet. I might come on to that a bit later then. What I really need more than anything at this stage though is the aqueous accumulator. This thing right here. Um, so you see here, this basically pulls water from surroundings and that's going to sync up with our steam dynamo. So we need uh, a bucket. Uh, a device frame. Um, what? Let's let's get into this. Are we missing for the device frame? Just this copper gear. Okay. Um, that's I think stone gear in the middle will give us the copper gear. Okay. So that's awesome. So device frame check. Next thing we're going to need is glass. We've got iron gears. Um, let's see. We only need two of them, but let's make those two up. There we go. Um, okay, and now it's just a bucket, which we know that recipe, <laughs> luckily. And one of these things, a redstone servo. So that's now enough for us to make this thing. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Um, that's really cool, but it's not going to do anything for us, really, without fluid ducts. Um, am I spelling this correctly? I believe so. Fluid up from thermodynamics. There we go. Um, so let's do that. And for now, actually, just the six that we get here from the one recipe, I think will be just fine. Um, steam dynamo. This is a very important thing. Uh, what are we missing? We need one of these, which is silver ingots. Now, there's a thing. I don't think we have any right now, um, but we have silver ore. Is that? That's tin. Okay. Um, I will actually get that tin going on. And I'll get, say, eight of these smelting up in the meantime as well. We'll just chuck that in, in like here. Um, oops, if I can pull out the coal, <laughs> it's going to be quite important. So there we go. Let's get that going on, and we'll go back inside with our tin. So, yeah, a little bit involved this process, but at the same time, really just a, a lot of it is just the early game resources that you need. Um, so it's a good thing to get into early on, I would say. If you're looking at how can you progress through this pack at a reasonable speed and in a reasonable manner, uh, this would definitely be what I would suggest. Um, so that should be enough now for us to make what we want to make. Um, so it was this thing here, wasn't it? Uh, and what else was we missing? One of these, which we can also make. And we have our steam dynamo. Awesome. Um, and as awesome as that is, we are still going to need something else for this to work, which are leadstone flux ducts. These things right here. Uh, not too bad of a recipe. Um, I'm going to do more than one of these because I just know that I'll need them, basically, um, throughout the pack. So 18 of those sounds good. And, all right, let's start now getting down and making some of this stuff up. Because our inventory is getting very busy here. I think we need to start losing some things. So maybe we just uh, start putting some things back in here as well. Uh, like that. Alrighty. So the quickest way for us to get down there from here is just down this way like this. And here's our little room that we made earlier. Uh, I will finish this mine off, but at the moment I wanted to concentrate on this. Because obviously this is something that can work in the background. Now... Uh, this is going to be a little bit trial and error, but I think this is going to work. Incidentally, that water is the actual lake or the river, I should say, that you guys see from above. So I like the fact that that's just natural water coming down there, not something I've created. Uh, I like to do that when I can. But basically, if we put the aqueous accumulator in there, that's not currently filling up with water. Hmm. See, it might. I might need to extend this out by one. Now, actually, right now, um, oh, we're going to need to eat, but we're going to need to go and get uh, our crescent hammer sorted out. Because when we're doing all this stuff, in order to move these machines, break the machines, um, and you know, turn them around, change their orientation, that kind of thing, uh, you need the Crescent Hammer from Thermal Expansion. So that's definitely a tip if you're getting into this pack. 
make sure that you, you try and move things that way. Because otherwise, if you don't use the right tools, and it's not just with this mod pack, there's all different ones, you can lose things. And uh, that can be very annoying. So the Crescent Hammer, what was it we needed? Just one tin, wasn't it? So one tin, three iron. Um, one, two, three of the irons. Uh, oh, we had iron on us. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't matter. Um, and our tin, I'm assuming, is in here smelting up, isn't it? So we can grab some of that. There we go. Um, so, one crescent hammer coming our way. Um, the only other thing I should probably do is take down a bucket of water. So if it is the water that's the issue, then we can try and, and fix that. Uh, like that. Um, just thinking, actually, the sensible thing to do here... It is another three iron, and iron is something that we're slightly limited on at the moment. But if I take two, make an infinite water source, that's probably the way to go with that. I have to say, I love this shader pack at night, by the way. Not something I've shown too much on camera, but everything around here looks pretty cool at night time. I hope you guys agree. But um, the different colors and things of the leaves is definitely a good idea with the shader pack, I would say. So, again, if you like the shader pack, um, its link is in the description uh, if you'd like to uh, install that. Bear in mind, you do need Optifine installed, um, which, you know, it's just Google Optifine and there's a million videos and stuff on it. That's easy enough, but uh, yeah, just to mention that. So this here is definitely not filling up with any water, which is an issue. It would be showing here if it was working. Um, so I can try, like, moving this. And let's see if we get our axe here. Um, what I'll do is just create a little area here with an infinite water source like that there we go um so let's try oops i missed <laughs> let's try not to miss and let's try putting that there and there and if we place this down here perhaps that will now work and perhaps not um okay why does this not want to work then because I, I did test this out before and it was working just fine so auto input unavailable it's saying maybe that still doesn't count i'll tell you what we could do is this is 100% an infinite water source here. If we put it in there... Hmm, all right, this this was 100% working before when I did it, so I'm not sure why it's not right now. Uh, let me just go double check why that is, and then I'll bring you guys back in. Alrighty, guys, I think I have figured this out now. So when that goes down there, you see nothing goes in there. But if we place a fluid duct on top, all of a sudden, it should, if we give it a second... Hmm, it should start working, but it doesn't. But I think that is more to do with... The water that's around it than anything yeah there we go so now it starts working so it does need to be in an infinite source but now that works and that's filled with water so that's awesome right so now what do we want to do here um redstone furnace pulverizer those are the two machines we have at the moment and of course the steam dynamo needed uh to power those so let's maybe um tell what, let's fill these buckets up um, in case we do need any more water in a second and then fill this back in and we can start planning out the layout of this room. So the steam dynamo can go there. Um, I believe that might be the wrong way around, though. I think it might need to go. Oh, I tell you what we actually are going to need as well is some coal. Um, so it works with the water, but it needs something with it as well. It needs some coal. Uh, let's see. We do have some coal in here. Um, so I'll take a little bit of this for now, just for testing purposes. And if that works, then I'll try out some other things like charcoal and that sort of thing, see if that works, which I believe it does. Um, but just for now, I want to see if we can get this up and running. So let's chuck in maybe like a little bit of that. And let's try this different orientation because I think it's facing the wrong way. Oh, if you shift click, you delete it. <laughs> Pro tip. Um, so let's do that again. And let's just click that until it faces that way, like that. Now, if we, there we go, the water's in, and if we put in, like, a little bit of coal there, there we go, generating a bit of RF. And you see it holds up to 40,000 RF as well, so that's awesome. Um, these machines, where do we want them to be? Um, I suppose we could have it, like, here in a line. So we could have, maybe, mm, maybe for now we'll leave at least one gap so that we can get around the back of here if we need to. So we have the pulverizer there. Um, where did our furnace go? There it is. Alrighty, so there's our pulverizer and our furnace. We can now just power these like this, and these should all be receiving power. There we go. Awesome. Um, so now, we're, we're, we're pretty much good to go. Um, 
The only other thing I want to look at is automating the process so that once something's been pulverized, it goes straight into the redstone furnace um, and then potentially into a chest or something as well. We can look into that. Maybe a little iron chest here would be good. So uh, I'm going to need some more materials and things to do that. So let me go and just kind of get ready for that to happen and then we'll uh, get this underway and I'll show you this process as it works. Okay guys, so I actually got this uh, figured out and it's pretty simple. Uh, if we chuck some iron in there, you'll see that starts processing. You don't actually need any item ducts or anything like that like I thought you did. But basically we'll just see it here, the, the uh, iron, it will turn into two of the uh, pulverized iron and there's a 10% chance we get a nickel as well. And it goes straight into here, there they are. And I see I've done a couple already, I was sort of uh, testing this uh, very quick as well, which is awesome. Um, just wondering whether this will keep up. Actually, is this out of coal? Yeah, okay. So we're going to need to get some more fuel in there uh, in a second. But yeah, an automated process at the moment um, for these two things. I do want to get it kind of going into a chest as well and, and have chest feeding into it and that sort of thing. So I will work on doing that as well. Uh, but for now, we've got it here and it works and that's the main thing. Um, so guys, that's about it for today's episode. Um, it's about all we have time for today, unfortunately. But hopefully you found this helpful and a useful tip for uh, progressing through the pack and getting lots of extra resources. If you did or if you just enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And of course, if you do want to follow along with this series, then please do subscribe. I will be covering it quite thoroughly. And uh, as you see from my channel, the videos go up quite regularly as well. If you want to get involved in this series, uh, please do leave a comment and let me know. And if there's anything you'd like help with, again, let me know down in the comment section and I will do my best. <laughs> but for now, guys, that is it. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.